morning, church. It's Thursday morning. Take your Bibles and go to Matthew chapter number 7 and also find uh, John chapter number 10. We've been discussing what every Christian should know about salvation, and now we're going to begin to discuss what every Christian should know not only about salvation, but the security of the believer, that is the security of that salvation once we're saved, and also the abundant life that God saves us. But there's far more than just salvation. There is an entire life that God has uh, for us. Now, remember, at salvation, you and I are saved from the penalty of sin. When Christ comes into your life, when you're born again, you respond to the gospel by faith, repenting of sin and turning to Jesus Christ for your salvation. God fills you with his Holy Spirit. And at that moment, all your sins are pardoned. They're paid for. We're released from the penalty of sin. We will never die. We will uh, we'll die physically, but we won't die spiritually. But also, then he, he not only saves us from the penalty of sin, He saves us from the power of sin. That moment we're saved, the Holy Spirit comes in. God has given us the power through the presence of the Holy Spirit that we can overcome sin. So He delivers us daily, routinely, regularly, throughout the rest of our life. He is working out the old, he's getting rid of the sin in our life, and he's making us a new individual. But ultimately, he will deliver us from the presence of sin. That is, when this life is over, when I lay down this body in death or the rapture happens, that's where sin resides, is in the body. At the moment when I leave this body, my soul and spirit depart this body, God eventually will give me a new body, wherein only righteousness dwells, and therefore I will never be in the presence of sin ever again. What we have as far as uh, uh, Christian uh, overall, the view of Christianity, is two competing views about salvation. One is, is that when we're saved, we need to maintain that salvation through personal righteousness or we will lose, lose it. And so we're saved, ever how they believe we're saved. But eventually it comes to the point that, but you must work hard to be maintain it. So you're still, they, some would say you're saved by grace, kept by works. Others would say you're saved by works and kept by works. Uh, but that is not the nature of salvation that Scripture teaches. Others, like myself and, and many uh, Bible-believing people, believe that once you're saved, you cannot lose that salvation. In fact, if you truly understand the nature of salvation, you would know that it's all of Christ, that He and He alone can save us. Today, I just want to begin that thought process by looking at two verses. One is found in the Sermon on the Mount, and it's in chapter number 7 of the book of Matthew. Chapter number 7, Jesus talks about when the day of judgment comes, that there's going to be many who come into His presence. And in verse 21, It says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Now that almost sounds like, well, see, if you say, Lord, Lord, and you do the will of the Father, then you're going to get to heaven. But notice what he says in the next verse. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? In other words, they think they're saved by their works. We've done all these things. Verse 23, And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now, when Jesus says, I never knew you, it doesn't mean he didn't know about them or didn't know their names or what they had done in life. No, he knows everything about them. What he's saying is, We never had a relationship. Now, I want you to notice he doesn't say, yes, you once were saved, but you didn't maintain personal righteousness, or you slipped back into sin, or you turned your back upon me, and therefore I took away that relationship. No, it's the the relationship was never there. Now go to John in chapter number 10. In John chapter number 10, Jesus is talking about that he is the giver of life. And that he not only gives life, but he gives it in all of its abundance. And at the end of that chapter, he says, beginning in verse number 27, chapter 10, verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and notice this, 
I know them. Now those have my sheep. Now how do we know if we're his sheep? We hear his voice. We listen to him. We obey him. Doesn't mean perfectly, but we follow him. He says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Now here's a key verse. And I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Then he says, nobody's going to snatch them out of my father's hand. He's even greater than all. Oh, by the way, my father and I, we're one. Now, did you notice in that passage, Jesus said, those who truly are mine, my sheep, they will hear me. When I call them, they will come in repentance and faith. They will turn away from sin. They will do my will. They will follow me. And they will observe the things that I told them to do. And so the true follower of Jesus follows Jesus. But then he says, I give unto them everlasting life or eternal life, and they shall never perish. Now, notice again, I know them compared to the others that come and say they were saved. I never knew you. So Jesus knows his own. And once you are a part of his family, you can never lose that. You'll not walk away, nor will anybody snatch you away from that relationship. We will be with him for eternity. When Jesus gives you everlasting life, how long is that? I've asked this question of many a people that claim that you could lose your salvation. I said, I thought, I thought you said you had everlasting life. Well, well, I did, or they did, and, but they lost it. Now, you can't lose something that's everlasting. If Jesus gives you everlasting life, that means it never, ever ends. We'll be looking at some other verses, but just meditate upon those things and know this. First to last, salvation is by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And once we are truly saved, we'll not ever walk away. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you again that we can come to you and know that we have everlasting life. I give you thanks that you hold us in your hands and that nothing can ever take us away from your love. Help us to walk in that love today. In Jesus' name, amen.